Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, church. I am back to bring you another recap on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. And this is season 10, episode eight, and it is titled, a mad tea party. This recap is delayed but not denied because I informed you guys that I was going to Atlanta for a few days and I am back. Switch up. Switch up. Now, first and foremost, I want to begin with the most amazing and effective part of this episode, which was Kenya's domestic violence and or abuse PSA. And I think this may have been one of my most favorite episodes because of it not having so much, if any at all, drama in this episode, because it's great to see black people as a whole being able to work together and achieve some goals and to address some serious real life issues. But Kenya and her PSA. First, Sheree's blonde wig is horrible. That is clearly the same wig that she has on in her confessional where it's cut into a bob and looks like a helmet. So I guess she transitioned from the long version of it to the short version of it and it's still a no-go either way on her. But let's jump into the real deal of this episode and the PSA situation I had no clue that Kenya was stabbed and almost killed in her domestic violence situation. And the great thing about Kenya doing this PSA and us really getting to see her behind the scenes of one of her projects, it allows me to kind of have to retract some words because I feel like we've all have made jokes about how what is Kenya's real claim to fame besides her crown as it pertains to her being an actress in movies and so on and so forth. But I feel like this episode and the PSA really show that she does have some strong and significant and powerful work ethics because I kind of saw some of her qualities that I have as well in this particular scene because her wanting to make sure that her PSA was uh, cinematic, which I try my best to do the same when I do my YouTube videos and it not looking like someone shot it with their iPhone because I use a real camera as well. And also just the fact that Kenya in that element, it was just great. She was so professional, she was so spot on, she was so timely. Even her asking the questions to all of the ladies who were either doing testimonials or her giving the lines to people who were just reading some of the lines that she prepared for them. It was just great to see Kenya in that career work environment. And I really saw Kenya's seriousness and her ability as a producer and a director when Cynthia's mom was telling her story and she broke down crying and was just sharing that Cynthia and her sister was present during the time when her husband was abusing her verbally and physically. And I saw Kenya's directive skills really show up when Cynthia was ready to run after her mom and console her and Kenya had to pull Cynthia back and say no because as a great director, granted, it was beautiful that Cynthia wanted to console her mom and be there for her. But from a standpoint of filming and video, that was great. That was a great capture, a great moment, and an effective moment that will touch some viewers that did not need to be disturbed by Cynthia running into the shot, my God. And it was so heartwarming that Cynthia's mom only hope was that her daughters were proud of her. And when Cynthia said, I am so proud of you, mom, it just melted my heart. Also, we had Shamia give her testimonial, and that was a very heart-wrenching story. It was great to see her there and share and tell her story as well. Candy was phenomenal. I think Candy was my favorite as it pertains to someone connecting with the audience. Candy did not have her own personal experience with domestic violence, but she was really effective with the way that she articulated and her inflictions in her voice with reading the lines that Kenya gave her. Now, I'm not sure if you guys knew this, but I had no clue that all of the years that Nini was referring to that she was in a domestic violence relationship, I had no clue that it was Brent, Nini's son's father. I had no clue that's who she was referring to. But now we know because she did share that it was her oldest son's father who abused her. It was her first relationship, her first love. And she felt like 
even him hitting her was a form of him saying, I love you. Last but not least, Sheree was super late to the PSA commercial film recording and she was in a car accident and I, I, I know firsthand how scary and how flustered and how a car accident can just wreck your whole mindset, your state of mind and your day. And if she is really hurt, I send love and prayers out to her because that is no joke. She did say that she had a bulging disc already. So of course, getting hit from behind is not going to make it any better. And it was sad to see Sheree in so much pain, but it was so beautiful because Kenya, this is where I feel like I'm like Kenya. Kenya does not play when it comes to doing work properly and it being taken seriously. So regardless of Kenya being a perfectionist and wanting things right, she was still sensitive and kind enough to be mindful of making sure that Sheree was okay and, and consoling her. So it was great that she was able to stop filming and stop worrying about the commercial to at least tend to Sheree. Although I did side eye Kenya a tad bit because she said, I'm so sad that this had to happen to you on this day, which still kind of made it seem like she was referring to the fact that she wasn't able to do the commercial because it's important to Sheree, but I would feel like you would not want it to happen to Sheree on any day. But I do recognize that Kenya was still being kind, considerate, and having empathy and showing empathy for Sheree. But I will say that I love this episode because it was great to see all of the ladies involved in something so serious and important without having any negative energy involved. And I wanted to mention that because in past episodes, I've always addressed at least Candy's negative energy, even towards Portia, regardless of Candy claiming that she wants to be cordial but not deal with her. But this was a perfect example of how you may not rock with a particular person, but you guys can come together for a common goal without negative energy. And you're probably wondering why I didn't really mention Portia as of yet in the PSA. Uh, Portia is my girl, but I can call her out when she doesn't do her best. And I don't really, I didn't really care for Portia's portion of the PSA. She didn't really bring it like she could have. And I was 100% with Kenya giving the critique of say it like you're talking to your girlfriend, like really make it work. That's why I say Candy really killed it because she, she performed so well in that setting. Now let's address Portia and Ricky Smiley flirting. Now that scene was so awkward for me when they were smelling each other's colognes and all up on the necks. It was a tad bit sexual. And I also thought that Ricky Smiley may have been Portia's boss, but we found out that he is not her boss and Portia made it a point to say that he is not her boss because I feel like we all as viewers immediately thought about all of the sexual harassment situations that are coming to light. And I'm thinking, girl, it's Ricky. What's going on here? Like, ugh, it's too much exposure and too many people being exposed for work situations and sexual harassment going on for you guys to be portraying this on camera. But I guess the saving grace in that was Portia clarifying, this is not my boss. He can't take advantage of me. And I too, you know, see that he's a great man and it could be something there, but I'm just not gonna cross that line. Next, let's talk about Candy and Sheree's conversation about Prison Bay. Candy did carry the bone and told Sheree that Nene called her Prison Bay a con artist. And Sheree had a great clap back. She said, how dare she call him that because Greg and Nene both have mug shots. But what really stuck out to me was a question that I had, and that was, is Sheree planning to have Prison Bay come to Chateau Sheree? Because Candy asked that question and Sheree said, I'm not crazy, honey. He's not coming here immediately. But I mean, uh, that, doesn't, that doesn't really say if he's genuine or not or sincere because even if he knows that at some point he will end up there, it's still a reason for him to be patient and to kind of cater to you just for his benefit. I feel like Sheree should want to get a home separately opposed to this man coming to live into her home. Now, tea at the Hamptons, the mad tea party, my God. Okay, so it was great that Cynthia and Marlo teamed up together to try to salvage the relationship between Nini and Portia. And when it was first brought to Nini's attention, she came across very hesitant, but her main thing was she could be cool if Portia 
takes some ownership for what she did because Nene claims that she has taken ownership for what she did, but I'm not so sure that that's true. Portia to me seemed more optimistic and willing to be able to address the issues and move forward. Her spirit was just in a better space, I feel like, than Nene's. And I was glad that Portia was able to acknowledge that she was gonna go into this hoping that Cynthia would be honest as well in front of Nene as to her being in the same position in the past with Nene saying comments that do suggest her being fired. So I was all for this moment. I will say that Marla does not have the most beautiful home as it pertains to the exterior, nor the biggest home, but she definitely has one of the best decorated homes. Like her home decor is spot on. The way she even had the food displayed, it was just so elegant. You guys know I love me some Marlo, but she, yeah, she's, she's top notch as it pertains to knowing elegance. But I don't think her coin matches up with being able to have these large homes like the other housewives have. Now, I'm always so happy and proud of Portia when she can hold her composure, not be aggressive, speak articulately, and just get her point across. And Portia pretty much started out with explaining to Nene that I don't understand why every time we discuss this issue or these issues that it has to go to such a petty place. And Portia acknowledged that during her divorce, she talked to Nene if not five times a week, almost every single day. And she admitted that Nene was definitely there for her at that time and she called her her little sister. But Portia also shared different scenarios where she was there for Nene as well. Even things like her flying to New York to go see Nene on Broadway and support her. She also tweeted about her great and positive ventures on Nene's behalf on her Twitter account. And so Nene kind of made herself seem petty, foolish, and stupid in this scene because I remember Nene saying that, oh great, you tweeted, but showing support has to be seen through actions. And I'm thinking, bitch, Making a tweet or sending out a tweet is a form of an action. And Nene easily skipped over the fact that Portia's actions caused her to hop on a plane and go support her in New York. So I was just a tad bit annoyed with Nene not being as open and sincere as Portia, especially with Portia doing what Nene was looking for. And that was acknowledging what Nene has done for her. But it's sad that Nene has to try to downplay the things that Portia has done for her because it's just weird. Even Portia said, you know, I only missed two of your texts or was not able to reply to only two of your texts. And Nene said, no girl, okay, I'll let you believe it was only two texts, but it was more like a week. And I'm thinking, what the hell? These are some grown ass women. Is it really this important for you guys to be addressing how many days that it took for someone to text even Nene going as far as to say I just felt like you forgot all about me like I wasn't important from not responding for only a week if that was the case like I said Portia said two days Nene said a week and even if it was a week that's not a lot of time to me like I said these are some grown ass women and I'm not even on their scale of popularity and probably business and exposure and gigs and so on and so forth. So I could easily forget to respond to my God brother or a friend or my God sister and a week could go by because we all know that we have the intention because we look at a text, we can't respond in that moment, but then you go on to handling your business. So it's just strange that Nene as a boss would be so torn up about someone not responding to her nor replying in a week's time frame. And granted, Nene spoke to Portia during her traumatic situation, which was during her divorce. But if Nene's complaint is just about a random girlfriend text and not about a traumatic situation that happened in her life that she needed Portia for, this is all just so stupid. Like this is just dumb on Nene's part. And I know that Portia was pretty much vindicated and validated because even Marlo said, okay, when Nene was trying to give this fake passive aggressive apology, Marla was like, please open your eyes. Can you be more sincere? Because it was just, it's like you're playing in someone's face to 
throw this apology out there when this person has shared their feelings and addressed yours and has taken some ownership, but what has Nene really taken ownership for? I mean, I'm just at a loss for words because Nene claims she took ownership, but she has yet to acknowledge that even in the slightest form, saying that they should get rid of freak and fraud is still suggesting that someone should be let go and or fired. And Nene has yet to even own up to that. So how is she trying to hold Portia to a different standard than she holds herself and just saying that Portia never, never owns up or admits anything? Well, Nene, what the hell have you admitted or owned up to? And it was great that Cynthia pretty much said, you know, Marlo and Nene haven't spoken for four years. I haven't spoken to her for two years. And if we can get over our issues, which were significantly worse than what you guys are going through, clearly you guys can get over it. But the sad part about it was, Portia called it out. But she said, Nene does not give a crap about reconciliation due to her eye rolls and her behaviors and disposition. She clearly is not here for it at all. Last but not least, I wanted to address the OLG restaurant and staff and bosses looking for a new general manager. And I wasn't really going to address this because it wasn't that significant to me. But when I heard Don Juan state that people need to be able to handle Candy's mother and Candy saying that if he wants to keep his job, he needs to know how to work that situation out. My first thought was, why the hell should a general manager's responsibility be to handle Candy's disrespectful ass mama? Like really? That should not be a part of their job description. Joy should not be his responsibility. Now I see why they quit. But that's about it guys. Thank you for tuning in. Please follow me on all social media outlets. Comment down below in the comment section. Thumbs up this video. Subscribe to my channel. Turn on the notifications and thank you guys for watching. Bye.